Hi, this is an intro to Adobe Animate Illustration, and it's formerly called Flash Illustration, but Adobe Animate is the same program. I'm going to try to recreate this graphic using the vectors available in Adobe Animate, and if you've never used a vector illustration tool before, this might help you. First of all, I'm going to get a reference of this graphic. I'm going to right-mouse click it, and I'm going to copy the image, because when I go into Adobe Animate, you can actually open up your stage, and you can paste the reference graphic right on the stage. To get a little bit of reference, I'm going to assume that you've already got things set up here and you know the basic layouts of Adobe Animate. I'm going to double click the hand tool so it shrinks the canvas down into a size that sort of fits within the screen that I have in front of me. And I'll move this guy off to one side. Now my suggestion if you're going to make this thing is use a grid. Grid's going to make things a little bit easier to get things lined up. So I'm going to go to View and Grid and I'm going to Show Grid. But notice that the grid is really dense. It's a little bit difficult to work with. So I'm going to simplify things under my grid. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to change its size to, well, let's go with 100. 100 by 100 pixels. 100, 100. And now I've got something a little more reasonable to use. And I'm going to try to make a bigger version of this whole thing here. So object-oriented drawing is that you can use shapes lines and fills to try to recreate graphics and they become really flexible. You're not dealing with pixels, you're dealing with like the equivalent of cutting things out of construction paper and then putting them into a layout and stacking them one on top of the other. So I'm going to start with the easy thing and it's going to be that circle that goes behind this crest. I would suggest you always start with things in the background and the circle is behind the crest and the star so we'll do that. One more trick, if I want to really use this grid I'm going to go to view, snapping and make sure it snaps to the grid as well. That's going to make life a little simpler. You might also look at snapping and make sure it's snapping to objects. That can make life simpler as well. Before I start drawing this, this is the line or stroke color that goes around the outside. This is the fill color. So I'm going to click on this and choose a fill color that sort of matches. But you know the easy way to do that is just to click on a graphic that you've imported. If you have a JPEG that you copied and pasted in, it'll pick it right up. Now to make a perfect circle, I'm going to hold down the shift key when I use that oval tool. And then I can't help but to make a perfect circle each and every time. Now I snap to the grid, so it's a nice 3x3. Three three. Here's the next thing about vector graphics. It's kind of cool. Use the selection tool. Get used to that. That's a very important tool. Hit the V key on the keyboard to get to it quickly. When you use the selection tool, graphics are usually made of fill and stroke. And if you just click on the object and move it, you'll notice you're only taking the fill. If you have this fill highlighted, you can float this thing above anything that's underneath it and it won't destroy it. But as soon as you deselect it by clicking outside of it, the next time you move it, it's going to leave a hole. It's going to destroy, in this case, it destroyed the stroke that was underneath it. I'm going to control Z and get it back to where it was working a bit better. Here's the better way to select objects. If you know that you want to keep the stroke and the fill, double click it. It selects the fill and the stroke and then you can move them together. And as long as they're selected, it won't be destructive. As soon as you let go, it's going to change anything that's underneath it. But for, for now, this is good enough. When you have it selected, you also have access to its properties over here. And in this case, I want to make that stroke thicker. So the stroke here is defined by this color. You could actually change the color by clicking on these color choices. But I'm going to change instead the stroke width. And I'm just going to guesstimate that this is about the right size here. Now that I've done that, I'm going to click and let go of it. And if you want to seal this thing so that you can't destroy it accidentally, a good idea is to select it. Go up to Modify and group this object right away. Control G will do that for you. Now, I've got the first object created. Fantastic. Next object. I'm going to make this sort of crest shaped, sort of a bent-in triangle. And I'm going to use the Line tool to do that. There's a better tool that would work. That's the Pen tool above it. But I'm going to use the Line tool just to show how this works. The grid points makes this really easy. I can click a line, I can drag it like this. I know it's not going to follow the same curves and things. It's going to be sort of an approximation. But this kind of does the job. And you'll notice it snaps and closes those ends. That's really important because what we just drew was stroke. It has no fill when we use the line tool. But you can always fill it in with the fill tool, the paint bucket. And in this case, it's going to, just going to use that same blue that we had here. So if I wanted to get that gray, I'll click here, use the eyedropper, fill it in with gray. Now the superpower of strokes and fills and vector graphics in general is they are really malleable and editable. Unlike what you would do with pixels, if you used MS Paint or Photoshop, you couldn't do this. Hover over a stroke and pull it and you can bend these lines a little bit to stylize it. It also 
distorts the fill that's inside of that. So just by doing a little bit of modification to this, got myself something a little more interesting. That's clicking and dragging in the middle of a stroke. If you drag the end of the stroke, the point, and you can actually move that point too a little bit if you want to try to modify it a little bit further. So I'm kind of stylizing this thing and saying I can make this look a little bit more like the original if I just move some points around here and sculpt it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of doing an approximation. This object, double click it. So with it selected, Control G will group it and then I can move it and it doesn't interfere or destroy the thing underneath it. Kind of like sealing it in a Ziploc baggie. Last object I want to make is maybe that star shape. So this is a good one to learn some more tools. I'll use those lines again and I'll kind of draw this star shape roughly the way I want it. And in this case, I'm not using the grid so much. Just sort of an approximation. Because I can refine this thing later. In fact, it's going to look really bad. But I'll just put the points, the number of points that I need. I'm not really concerned with making it perfect right away. Just so long as it closes up, because then I can fill it later on. Uh, click that, choose a black, whoops, use the fill tool, fill it up. This object is much more fine, and I'm going to double click it and start refining it a little bit. First of all, the stroke is really big, so it's got these curved points. I can take that stroke all the way down to point 0.1. I could remove it all together, in fact, and maybe that's not a bad idea. If I double clicked the stroke, I can select just the stroke and hit delete, and what you get is actually a much sharper, pointier looking object. Now the next thing I might want to do is I might want to move those points around. If you actually want to see the points, I mean you can use the selection tool and grab them. The tool up here is the subselection tool and it's all about moving the points that define this thing. So if I wanted to make this thing look a little bit more like its reference, I could do that very easily. Tell you what I'm going to do though, I'm going to move it closer to the reference. Now that I've kind of fine-tuned it a little bit, I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to transform it and that would be the free transform tool this one here. When you use free transform you can grab a corner handle and you can resize it. Now notice that you can stretch it out or squeeze it or anything like that. Hold the shift key down and it shrinks it down in proportion so you can't do it wrong. And I'm going to move this a little bit closer up there so I can see my reference. Just like that. Now I'm going to zoom in on this thing too so I can see a little closer what the reference looked like. See if I can make that look a little bit better. I'm just going to move it down by grabbing the whole object with the selection tool, but then using subselect, I can then click on this thing and start moving the individual little points. And I can see them too. I can see everything that does it. So I can sort of balance this thing a little bit more in the middle. The other thing you can do is when you select it, tap the arrow keys. And so you can fine tune this just using arrow keys to get things lined up. I can see that this point should come down a little bit. If you want to move it faster, hold shift and tap the arrow key and it moves it 10 pixels at a time. But you get the idea that you can do the rough work first and then fine tune it to make it look a little bit better. And if you want to use the subselect tool to grab a couple of points, you can highlight over those points and then you can drag anything that you've selected that way. So you can get this thing looking pretty good. I'm going to say that's close enough for now. Double click the hand tool to zoom back out. It would make sense that this object was also grouped, so I'm going to double click it, Control G to group it together, and now I can put this point over top here. And finally, just to get everything all in proportion and do some other little tricks, it looks like this crest would benefit if I could rotate it a little bit. Free transform will let me do that. And I can rotate it by hovering outside of a handle. It looks a little bit better. Uh, this looks like it should be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to hold Shift key down make this thing a little bit bigger, balance these things, I'll tap it over to the side. You're getting the idea that bit by bit you can build something that's going to recreate it. And once I get all these pieces put together like this, I might want to group them, Control G or Modify Group, and there's an object. Give it a try for yourself. Good luck.